This is Wilt Week 18, which means all my Wilt Weeks from here on out are gonna be 18 plus. <laughs> Sorry, I had to make the joke. Today is Monday, February 5th, and today I learned that when it's sunny out, UC Davis is much more lively and active. The vibe was just more upbeat. Like, there were a lot more people out doing stuff. Like, on the quad, there were a bunch of people, and then out in front of my building, there were a bunch of people. There's just a lot of people out doing stuff. It's a great feeling here. In fact, there was even light out at, like, 6.30. No, it's actually pretty dark. Oh, really? At, like, 6.30ish? Yeah, it's 6.25, and it's actually, like, pretty dark out here. Oh shoot, well I guess you can't really see much, can you? Yeah, I can't really see much. Hey, but maybe next week? Maybe next week. Yeah, I mean for sure, we'll, we'll see though. Yeah, we'll see. But not even light at like 6.30? I mean, what a shame. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, it kinda sucks. Today's Tuesday, February 6th, and today I learned how to make this pink liquid in my chemistry lab. And this pink liquid is basically made of vinegar and water and um, uh, it's made of some other stuff like some indicator. Actually, I can't really remember everything it was made out of And the point of the lab was just to see how long it takes to dilute different types of liquids This is basically just an excuse to show off this pink liquid that we made in our chemistry lab. So yeah Oh, yeah the chips see I really like the smell of vinegar So the lab we were doing was dealing with vinegar, so I had to go and get chips, but don't worry I didn't eat too many. I mean I, I ate a fair amount. I, I wasn't shoveling them into my mouth. Oh, oh, oh Shoot. Also, Monday and Tuesday's footage of this wilt I kind of lost. I had to redo these parts. That's what you watch, the redone versions. So going on to Wednesday, I'm going to have a face full of facial hair. So just be prepared for that and don't be freaked out. That's why. Because I had to redo Monday and Tuesday because something happened to the footage. So thank you for understanding and please don't freak out. Today's Wednesday, February 7th, and today I learned what this Chinese, um, I actually don't even know what it was. My roommate gave me this little thing in this like candy wrapper and told me to try it. And I was like, oh, is this a candy? And he was like, no, um, I really, I really don't know how to describe it. But it's not a candy and it's almost like a little piece of wood and you just put it in your mouth and you chew and it makes your entire mouth just blow up with like minty flavor. Again, I don't know what it is, but it tastes like really flaky wood and it was incredibly minty. Again, I don't really know what to make of it. So you're just gonna have to see it yourself. So it's like, it's called a reka nut in English. Yes. What, what do you call it in like Chinese? Bing la. Bing la. Bing lang. Bing lang. Lang, yeah. Bing lang. lang. Okay. So it's like chewing gum. Yeah. Okay. Let's try it out. Maybe first you should just uh, put the thing out. Uh, just take it out. Oh, take it. Take it out. Mm -hmm. If you want to, but if you want to take it out, you can use a. I can't just put like the whole thing in my mouth. Or... Uh, if you want to, but I recommend. To take it out. Okay. okay. This is the first time you're yeah. you're trying to. So this is what it looks like. It's like it looks like half of like a nut or something. Okay. So I just scoop it out. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. Oh, oh, it says middle like red thing. Yeah. Oh, and then this is the only thing I eat. This could be eaten. No, 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 this is thing that you eat. This is what I eat? Yeah. I don't eat this. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and then I just put this whole thing in my mouth. Yeah, and, and just bite it. It's a little bit hard. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's minty, right? Uh, or is that not? Kind of like that, yeah. It's really good though. Yeah. Like, it like, it's like a breath mint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It tastes like a breath mint. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you chew on it for a long time or do you like spit it out or like what happened? Yeah, yeah. It was good though. I liked it. So when do you typically eat this? I rarely eat that thing because I live actually in the middle part of China. Oh, okay. And this is from my friend at the southern part. Oh, that's cool. Do you like it? Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> and after I finished chewing all the flavor out of it, that's when I started burping a lot. And that's when my roommate told me, oh yeah, that's gonna happen to you. You're gonna start burping a lot. And I started burping for like 20 minutes. Fantastic. Today is Thursday, February 8th, and today I learned that you're very tired when you come back from being sick for a week. I was sick all last week with that throat infection thing, so I'm back this week and it's Thursday, and the effects 
of coming back to school and going through this whole normal schedule again, it really starts to hit you late into the week. Like, I am very tired. Like, every day when I'm finishing my classes, I just feel very exhausted. And you have to build up this strength again because school is tiring. Going to school every day, going out there, interacting with people, learning, it takes a lot out of you. And I don't know why, but my legs, my legs feel super tired at the end of every day. Like, I just ran or something. I didn't run. I just went through the day like normal and my legs and my feet kicked up here because they're just so tired. Today I also learned and if you follow basketball you know this too that the Cavaliers traded six of their players today for four players and then I think a couple of like picks and stuff like that. And if you don't follow basketball that's pretty significant because the Cavs led by LeBron James have about 14 players on their roster. That's like the average a basketball team has 14 players and they traded six of them away which is almost half of their roster. Which is insane. There's a lot of rumors, a lot of news. Again, if you follow the NBA around the Cavaliers having internal issues with their uh, management and their players and their coaches and everything. And so today the dam broke and it all flooded out and they got rid of like half of their roster. So yeah, pretty big news in the NBA world. And my legs are still really tired. So I guess that's big news too. For me, not so much you. Today's Friday, February 9th. And today I learned that it's National Pizza Day, which is probably my favorite national day ever. It's the best one. And of course I got my a pizza because I had to. I mean, it just makes sense. I did something a little different with this pizza. Usually I just get pepperoni. And I did get pepperoni, but on half of it, I put hot sauce. I don't know if you can really tell. You can kind of tell. It's a little saucier than that side. So I'm going to try the hot sauce on the pepperoni pizza. It looks really good. I mean, it looks fantastic. I really like hot sauce. Pretty good. I have to admit, I kind of like just pepperoni, but pepperoni with hot sauce isn't bad. I think ranch would totally complete this hot sauce pepperoni pizza. Okay. Oh yeah, that is really good. Pepperoni pizza with hot sauce and ranch is so good. I love this national day so much. Today I also learned that passing back test in lecture is way more convoluted and complicated than passing back test in your discussion. So just so we're on the same page, a lecture is when the professor talks to, you know, hundreds of you, and the discussion is where the TA talks to, let's say, like, 30 of you. Not that many. And we just had our math midterm, and our math professor decided to pass back all the tests in our lecture, the one with hundreds of people, rather than our discussion. And while it did get done, it was pretty hectic, and it took up, like, 20 minutes or so, and there was a lot of talking and a lot of crowding, and it wasn't, I think, probably the most convenient. So I think passing back tests to hundreds of people it maybe isn't as easy as passing back tests to maybe, you know, tens of people. But I don't know, maybe there's something I'm not seeing. Who, who knows, really? Or maybe it was exactly what I was saying. Really no idea with this one. So yeah, that was Will Week 18, and my question this week is, if a fish is submerged in water, which, I mean, I hope it is, does it know that it's wet? Because a fish to water is essentially a human to oxygen. It's what we breathe in. And we're aware when we're in oxygen versus when we're in water. So does a fish know when it's in water? And does it know it's wet? I don't know. I don't think a fish knows that it's wet. But, I mean, there's really no way for me to tell for sure. So let me know what you think. If a fish is submerged in water, does it know it's wet? And again, if you're watching, I just want to say thank you so much because it's really fun to do this series. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, I really like doing this. And I'll see you next week for Wilt Week number 19. Thank you, everyone.